guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new, my name is Heather. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids, elementary, middle, and high school age. Today I'm going to be sharing my summer goals refresh with you and kind of revisiting some of my goals. So let's get started. Okay guys, so you will notice that we are not at the end of the second quarter yet. And that is because I kind of structure my goals a little bit differently than the traditional four quarters of the year. The first quarter definitely happens that way. January, February, March, and then at the end of March, I do my quarterly refresh. But then after the end of May, I tend to do a summer refresh. And at this point in the year, I will revisit my word of the year. I will look at my goals, similar to what I do on a normal quarterly refresh, but I just move it up a little bit. And that's really because June, July, and August are the summer months in Maine. And then by the time September rolls around, we're full on in school mode again. So I treat September, October, and November as kind of the last quarter of the year. And then December is typically focused completely on family and holidays and prepping for the new year. I don't do a ton of new goals or trying to make progress on goals in December because for me and my season of life it just it just doesn't work for me so instead I use that kind of as just a month to reset and think about the new year as well as spend a lot of time with my family so today what I'm going to do is go over my goals that I set at the beginning of the year kind of give you an update I did make quite a bit of progress in April and May on my quarterly action plans that I shared with you in my last uh quarterly goals video i feel really good about my progress i wasn't sure how i had done uh, until my monthly reset, which was last week. I went through all of my action plans and my goals and I realized that I had actually completed quite a bit. And I think going into April, I knew that I was only going to really have two months, that my focus had to be on finishing up our school year and, um, and things went really well. So I, I'm pleased with my progress. I'm happy that I'm able to make goals with uh, good timelines with them so that I'm able to make adequate progress and feel like I'm succeeding instead of making really big reach goals knowing I'm not going to make progress on them. I guess I'm just pretty realistic about what I'm able to accomplish in a certain time frame. So I'm really thankful about that because <laughs> when I sat down to look at my quarterly uh, action plans, I wasn't sure how I had done. And that was mainly because I wasn't really checking in with my goals much in April and May. April, I've mentioned this in a few videos, my kids were sick for most of the month. And then um, May is super, super busy. It was super busy. We have a lot of birthdays. And then we were finishing up school and getting our end of year teacher reviews done for homeschooling. So it was just kind of crazy. And actually, <laughs> June is also going to be very busy. And so I have my action plans. These are a printable from Goal School from Cultivate What Matters. I don't use the power sheets. I'm not using the power sheets this year, but I did purchase the power sheets um, and I reviewed it. If you're interested, uh, I have used the power sheets. I think I started using them in 2014. I really love the process, but they have streamlined it so much that I needed a lot more space to flesh out my ideas. So I'm just using a Leuchtturm notebook. This I think is a B5 size and I have written a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot <laughs> uh, this, this year. So I have not filled out my quarterly action plans yet. I am going to do that soon. I really had to get my calendar in order just to see. I don't have a ton of time to work on any big projects in June because we're so busy. So that is what it is, but I, I really haven't had time to sit down and do the action plans either. I haven't done my June goals either. It's May 31st when I'm recording this and um, I'm hoping to sit down and do my June goals after this video and then hopefully this weekend I can sit down and really flesh out my action plans. I know what I need to get done, at least in June, and um, some of the things that I want to work on for the rest of uh, July and August as well. I think that because I've just been so busy, 
it's not been a time for me to work on a lot of new projects. I'm just trying to get through to the next thing. Um, so I wanted to revisit my word of the year, which is slow, and kind of talk about how that has translated into my goals. Um, I really wanted to pare down on time commitments outside of the house. It's primarily because last fall it was super busy. All, all fall was so busy with homeschool, with public school activities on top of homeschooling, a lot of things outside of the house, and we really just needed to slow down. And we did start to do that in uh in the second semester or the beginning of 2023 we were really able to step back and i appreciate that it gave me time to focus on my home and some of the things that i've wanted to accomplish this year were things like uh, getting rid of all of the extra stuff that we don't really need in our home that is physical things as well as activities or uh, t drains on our time that weren't one of the most important things for us. And so kind of thinking about that, chatting with my kids, seeing what they find valuable throughout our, throughout our days has been important to me. Getting rid of some of the physical clutter I don't feel like I have a ton of stuff. Well, that's, I say that, but I do have like a ton of books um, and I have a lot of stuff in my office that I don't necessarily need, but don't know what to do with either. It's not stuff that I necessarily want to throw away, but visually it is kind of overwhelming sometimes. And I just kind of keep sifting through stuff and getting rid of stuff as I can. Um, but slow is also really focusing on taking a step back and not having such an instant gratification type of mindset. That's kind of where we are at in culture right now. If you're bored, you know, you just pull up a YouTube video or you're constantly flipping through social media or, you know, you order things and you expect them to be there in a day. Everything is pretty instant. I guess that's, that's what it is. And so slowing down for me, things like some kind of random things were like, getting rid of Amazon. Uh, even though I could utilize Amazon, I realized that it's very easy for me to just order stuff off of Amazon and it would come, but do I really need it? No. And so when I now need something, I actually have to put a little bit more thought into it. Do I actually need this thing? or not. Um, I know it seems kind of silly. It, what, we didn't just get rid of Amazon because of my word of the year being slow, but it was also part of like my slow money strategy and just not having as much access to things as quickly, I think helps. It just makes me think a little bit more. You know, when we want to get a birthday present for somebody, I will go downtown and shop at the local shops instead of just ordering something off of Amazon. So that uh, that is good. I am utilizing the library more than just ordering books uh, physical books from Amazon or Barnes and Noble, although I do use Kindle Unlimited a lot. So <laughs> there is that. Um, but just having that mindset of slowing down and not having such an, a need for instant gratification, I think has been really good for me. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at with slow. It was also to slow down our schedules and really enjoy time with one another, which I'm trying to do with the kids. It was taking the time to sit and have those conversations that the kids want to have with me, spending time doing their uh, their fun things or not trying to rush so much. I don't like to be rushing from one thing to the next, which is kind of funny because May is super busy. June is also going to be super busy. So there is actually a lot of rushing around, but um, hopefully we are able to put some margin in our days to make it more enjoyable for us. So I'm going to go through my goals and just kind of share a little update and some of the things that I'm hoping to work on uh, over the next few months. My focus over the next few months is, <laughs> it's really going to be a lot of homeschool related stuff. And a lot of my goals every year are homeschool related. And that is mainly because one of my top priorities is to give my kids a 
love of learning and to make sure that they are enjoying their education and learning the things that they find valuable as well as the things that I think they ought to <laughs> find valuable. So um, I spend an awful lot of time working on homeschool planning and prepping, especially at this time of the year. It helps me to kind of coast during the busier seasons once we start our new resources, uh, usually in the middle of July. So my first goal was to create and implement a clear home management system. Part of this was because we have a lot of extra stuff that we just don't need in our home, things that we were planning to get rid of when we moved into this house that we just haven't gotten rid of yet. Um, some things that I had planned to do when we moved in, but if you've watched any of my videos, we just didn't because COVID happened two weeks after we moved. <laughs> so, um, so it was just kind of like all of that stuff got pushed to the back burner and we had other priorities and then things have just come up over the past few years and we haven't gotten back to those original the original intent when we moved into this house so trying to manage the house trying to figure out a home management system that works for cleaning um for chores for the kids my kids are all older now uh well lucy is still only eight but Jack and Emma are teenagers and can do quite a bit of stuff and they do, but getting it into a rhythm so that they, so that I don't need to prompt people to do things, that there's just kind of a set schedule for when things are done. I haven't really figured out what that best schedule is and it does kind of change depending on the season anyways with the chores that are required of us whether it's like outside chores or inside chores. So I've just been trying to make progress on that stuff. This summer, a lot of our projects are outside related, obviously because it's good weather in the summer in Maine. So it's things like taking care of the garden and making sure that we're keeping up with the weeding and the processing of vegetables when they come in. I do a lot of gardening for food preservation and not necessarily for just eating during the summer. I mean, there is still a good bit of eating, but we grow a lot of like green beans for dilly beans. I grow cucumbers, pickling cucumbers so that I can make pickles and relish. I will freeze tomatoes or make crushed tomatoes and can them, all of that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, that's, that's just what it is. So we have a lot of summer projects related to the garden and the chickens um, and just like brush and trees around the yard. I'm looking out the windows as I'm talking about this. And then I really want to get rid of a lot of the furniture that has been in our house. And I've talked about it, I think in several goals videos, things that I just want to sell and get rid of, but it's all really big furniture and I haven't, um, listed it on Facebook Marketplace or anything like that, but it does need to be gotten rid of. Uh, the winter is not the best time to do that, so I have kind of been waiting until the summer. I may or may not do like a yard sale because we do have a lot of other stuff that we could get rid of, or I may just donate it because the thought of a yard sale is really overwhelming to me and a lot of work for not a huge amount of, uh, income from that I don't think so we'll see that's still kind of up in the air uh, and then the other thing that I really want to focus on for this next quarter with my home management system uh, is cleaning out the unfinished part of our basement and especially the memory bins which kind of relates to my legacy goal so it's this home management system goal is to get rid of all the clutter and the extra things so that I don't have to maintain them, so that I don't have to think about those things. They're not weighing on me and then we can just have our normal daily cleaning schedule and then our deep cleans, you know, monthly or whatnot uh, and just having different projects for different seasons. Yes, that was a lot about <laughs> creating and implementing a home management system. I've used a lot of tools. I did purchase the Home Planner from Passionate Penny Pincher uh, last fall, which I really, really like. It does not work for me as just a general planner, but the printables, the digital version, it's editable, editable? Yes, I think that's how you say it. So you can edit the checklists. You can print out the checklists that you need. There's so much good information in that planner. 
um, that I am using and I've just printed it out and put it in a home management binder, which is another part of my creating and implementing a home management system. I tried to get away from the home management binder for years, but I found that there are just some things that I need a place for it to go. And that works. Um, it's not stuff that I refer to constantly. So being in a binder is fine. Okay. So that was my create and implement a clear home management system. This next month, we are all over the place with appointments and uh, the, both my older two kids have jobs and there is uh, volunteer work that they're doing and some uh, summer classes that they are that my oldest is participating in. So all of that stuff, I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have in June to actually work on those things. I might at the end of the month because I have a little bit more time at the end of the month. We'll see when I do my June goals. <laughs> um, the next goal is to create and implement a slow money strategy. If you saw my recent monthly reset video, I think I just posted that yesterday. Uh, I talked a lot about budgeting. Last fall, I really started to try and deep dive on budgeting and figuring out a new system. Not that I needed a new way to budget because I'm essentially doing the same type of budgeting, but I'm paying a lot more attention to what we're spending our money on and categorizing that spending um, through spend tracking. And so uh, at, the, at the end of 2022, I did set up all of these spend categories. I have different colors for each category and I'm really keeping close track of what we're spending on a lot of incidental purchases. That was mainly it. Um, and also food purchases with the inflation and everything, food is so extremely expensive. I know that it's not just me, but it seems like in Maine where I live, the, the food prices seem to be higher than even uh, people that live in New Hampshire. <laughs> so we don't have a whole lot of options and I don't use a ton of coupons because I don't buy a lot of packaged foods. I mainly purchase meat, dairy, veggies, fruit. So anyways, I have pretty much settled on a new system for managing our finances and really keeping track of that stuff. I went through many different ways essentially doing the same thing, but with different uh, resources. So I started with the home management planner from Passionate Penny Pincher, and then I moved to creating my own in a binder with a bunch of different printables from The Budget Mom and Dave Ramsey and things that I have created over the years, moving to my daily duo to do spend tracking on that blank page between Sunday and Monday each week, and keeping, every, keeping track of everything in like the monthly calendar but I've decided to use a normal monthly planner from Erin Condren. The new ones are coming out sometime in June, and so I will purchase a new one whenever those are released, and um, hopefully that will get me through to the end of the year, end of this year, and then I'll really have a good strong handle on my spending for the full year, which is what I wanted to focus on. Um, but thinking about things before I purchase them, not just going out and buying coffee, not that I, I really didn't do that all that often anyways, uh, just trying to be more mindful of what we're spending our money on. Unfortunately, with three growing kids and homeschooling, there, there are a lot of just random expenses that have come up and keeping a close eye on those things has been really important to me. And I think that it's going quite well. So I'm pleased with everything that I'm doing. I wish that it hadn't taken me so long to figure out a good system, but that's okay. Um, the next thing, my next goal is to continue to pursue my passions by cleaning up rhythms and routines. And this was mainly focused on like my morning and evening routine, as well as my daily uh, the structure of my day. And I've been doing quite well with this goal. Um, I have been trying to work on my morning routine a little bit more recently. In the fall of 2022 and then in the winter, January through March of 2023, um, my morning routine got totally off because in the fall we were so busy and then I felt like I was just recuperating in the winter and it was cold and dark and nobody wants to get up early on those days. Um, so cleaning up my rhythms and routines, not 
spending as much time on social media first thing in the morning. I do a lot with work through social media. It's very easy for me to uh, start answering questions or getting on emails with clients and spending huge amounts of time doing that. And I want to do that and it's fun for me to do that, but I know that I have other priorities as well. Um, things like making sure that I am doing some nonfiction reading in the morning, things like writing where I used to have a really good morning writing practice. And I, I did even in November because I participated in NaNoWriMo. Um, this was the first year that I've done NaNoWriMo uh, probably in like six years. My kids always participate, but I haven't done it since my kids started participating because I've been helping them with NaNoWriMo. So I did get into a really good writing rhythm during November and the beginning of December, but then the holidays came and I just fell out of that rhythm. I want to get back to it because it's a creative outlet for me and also I just enjoy writing. It doesn't have to be fiction writing because I do have a website if, you, if you're unaware. I've been um, blogging since 2011 at Townsend House and so I have thousands of <laughs> blog posts on there all about green living and homeschooling and uh, you know rhythms and routines and all of that fun stuff. So. I want to get back to more writing. It's something that I enjoy, but I just really haven't taken the time for it and I want to. Uh, so I'm going to focus on getting my new morning basket set up. I have the new Inspire organization or organizer caddy, I think that's what it's called, which I'm super excited about. I'll leave a link for that in the description box, but I'm already using it. It fits my teacher planner and I have a bunch of other larger notebooks and I take it to go outside to do my planning. But I also want to fill a section for morning time for me, which is mainly my devotional, um, my Bible, my Bible journal, and um, a nonfiction book. So I have to set that up. I haven't done that yet. Um, and I also would like to start working on an evening routine. It's not something that I'm good at because I kind of check out, my mind checks out in the afternoon. And so when the evening comes, I just kind of like make dinner, clean up from dinner, watch a show with my oldest daughter or um, talk to my kids or watch them play games or whatnot. I don't have any sort of like skincare routine that I do at night or anything like that. I just brush and floss my teeth and then I read <laughs> on my Kindle in bed. That's that's essentially my evening routine. But I feel like there's more that I can do. And just trying to make it so that I don't say to myself, you're just tired at night, so you don't have to do anything. Um, yes, I'm tired at night, but I could do a little bit more. It doesn't have to be difficult things, but, you know, writing in my pocket journal, I kind of fell out of that habit. I have a little pocket journal from Erin Condren that's really teeny tiny and I like to write like a positive thought or memory from the day, but I haven't been doing that for the past couple of months. Although I have been spending a lot of time with my oldest daughter watching shows or a movie and just having a lot of conversations with her, which I also value immensely. I want to make sure that I am taking the time for that because it, I do find it very important. But just trying to flesh out some new ideas. So that's something else I'm going to think about, especially as we start to move into um, our new homeschool year, which starts in July. That's another thing that I want to focus on. It does relate more to my homeschool goal uh, to get everybody's new rhythms ready um, using my daily habit tracker printable that I made years ago. And I think I will do that for everybody, but I have to sit down with everybody. So these are my goals, but I also work with the kids to try and implement some of their own rhythms and routines. So that's kind of all encompassing there. My next goal is create a home where learning is valued and passions are pursued. We finished up our homeschool year. I got all of our end of year teacher reviews done. So all of that is done. I'm super thankful about that. I've gotten all of my curriculum, uh, all of the base curriculum that I need for the new year. And actually Jack's instructor's guides for level 100 just came in the mail today, which I'm so excited about because they were on back order and I didn't think we were going to get those until July. 
which was really freaking me out because we start our new school year in July and I try to have at least the first six to eight weeks really cemented in my brain for all of the resources that we're using and I was worried that I wouldn't have time to do that. So I'm excited about that. I need to get my instructor's guide set up. We're doing three different levels this year. It might do me in and we'll see. I have not done three levels of sunlight ever, I don't think. Well, that's not true. I think a few years ago I did um, when Lucy was in one of like the, either the pre-K or the kindergarten level, I was doing three different levels, but that was a little bit different because pre-K is, is not that challenging. <laughs> so wish me luck guys, I'm going to need it. Uh, I did just order some Bible resources. I know that I talked in my curriculum choice videos that we don't typically do Bible like as a subject. Um, we do Bible together some. I did order some studies that I think will be interesting for us to go over together um, and some resources from Not Consumed. When I get those, I will share them with you. Um, I need to work on my yes and no list for next year, specifically homeschool related. This past year, I did a yes and no list at the beginning of 2022. And then we did really, really well until the summer and then I threw it out the window. <laughs> And uh, I can't do that this year because it was very stressful fall for everybody. And so I need to stick to that. But I'm going to talk to the kids about it as well because I like to keep uh, what they're interested in also at the forefront of my mind. Um, so I'm not saying no to things that they want to do. <laughs> Not all of the things anyways. Uh, and then, like I said uh, before, with the daily rhythm and my habit printables, see if I have that. So this is my daily habit tracker. And all I do is I just write the month up here. Uh, and then I just write whatever the things are down the side. And then you just check it off each day that you do it. So there's plenty of lines that I don't, I wouldn't say, oh, do every single line every day. If it's a new habit that you're trying to implement, that would be very difficult to do. I typically use this for school subjects and chores and things like that. But what I'm going to do is list out my early morning block of time, my homeschool rhythm block, where I try to put an order of things on, on a list because I like to do things in a specific order. My kids are able to do their own work at their own pace in whatever order they want, but um, I tend to like to follow a list and actually two out of three of my kids also do. And then having an afternoon block and then my evening routine block. So I'm going to have four different blocks on here with some of the things that I want to accomplish as well as the times associated with it. And I think that's the biggest difference I have not really had time-bound rhythms. Um, I say that, like I just have a chunk of time in the morning where I know, okay, this is going to be my morning routine time. Uh, but my basic routine of coffee, planning, and Bible, I want to extend it a little bit. And so I need to make sure that I assign times. Uh, like if I get on social media, that could be a couple of hours if I really just sit down to answer all of the questions that I get, but it doesn't have to be. I could just take 30 minutes and choose some of the most important questions that I think are like time sensitive and then put the other ones to later in the afternoon after we've worked on our homeschool and stuff. So that's kind of what I'm talking about with the daily habits. And then um, I will also do this for my kids for chores and uh, I will do new chore charts and stuff as we start our new homeschool year. Okay. But my focus really over the next month in June is going to be going through all of my instructor's guides, making sure that I have a good handle on the resources we're using, making sure that if there are books that I want to switch out, I do. And um, if there are books that I know right off the bat that I'm going to drop, I can work that out as well. I've already pretty much done that for Jack. Um, specifically for his literature. We're literature-based homeschoolers, and so we read a ton of books, and I'm not, um, I don't think that it's bad if I drop a bunch of books. We don't typically drop like 15 books, you know, and only read like five 
to eight books, but we typically read probably about 15 books a year, depending on the subject per kid. Uh, and so there are definitely books that I cut out and I don't think that that's I don't think that that's bad. My next goal is to continue to deepen my faith by reading the Bible chronologically. And if you saw my 2023 goals video, you'll know that I got um, the, oh, what is it called? Eden to Eternity Bible study from Daily Grace Co. I think that's who it is. And I started, I actually started reading through the New Testament chronologically because I read the Old Testament pretty much every year and then either I will completely finish the Bible but I'm rushing the New Testament or um, I only get through the Old Testament and then I don't get to the New Testament. And because I enjoy reading the Bible chronologically, I always start in the Old Testament but this time I said I'm going to start in the New Testament. So that is what I did and I have about eight days left of uh, reading for the New Testament. It's taken me a lot longer than I expected. I did spend a lot more time looking at commentaries as I was reading, which is not something that I typically do, but I do have some commentaries and so I thought it was interesting to read through the New Testament chronologically first. And so I'm probably going to finish that I say eight days, but it'll probably take me through the rest of June because I'm not reading as fast as the plan uh, is prescribed to be. So, because I've been looking at commentaries and stuff. So I think that I will probably finish the New Testament by the end of June. And then I think that I'm going to go back to my Write the Word journals first thing in the morning and look for a good study on a New Testament book. I'm not sure which one yet, but I thought that it might be a little interesting for me to deep dive on some of the New Testament books individually, which is not something that I've done in many, many years. Um, I've been reading the Bible chronologically pretty much every year for maybe the past eight years. Again, I don't make it through the whole Bible every single year. Some years I only make it through the Old Testament. Some years I make it through just the New Testament, but it is mostly the Old Testament. I feel like I've read in the past five years the most. So I'm going to pick a few books and we'll see. I might do like one book July, August, and then one book September, October, and then November and December are a little bit different just because of the holidays and finishing up our first term of homeschool, etc. I also am thinking about maybe doing a tie-in with some of the 300 level 300 Bible books that are for Emma this year because I'm interested in reading those as well. I'm trying to loop my morning time so that I'm hitting on all of the things but I don't try and do them every day which I think is helpful because uh, sometimes it's very easy for me to say here's my huge list of things and I only got through four of them and the next day I'm going to do the same four and the next day I'm going to do the same four whereas I really ought to be looping some of those resources so I'm touching on them at some point during the week, uh, similar to a homeschooling loop. It's not something I had considered before about a month ago. And then I said, well, why don't I loop some of my morning time resources for myself? Because that makes sense. So anyways, uh, my next goal is to grow the Townsend House community, uh, which I think is going great. I'm really having a great time in my membership community. Um, I have a lot of great conversations there. I want to work on some book club content. We're just finishing up the book Free to Learn by Peter Gray, and we're going to be working on Modern Miss Mason. I don't know if, I think it might take us two months to get through it. I also want to look at some new <laughs> blog post categories and kind of some organization of some of that stuff which I tend to do more in the winter months, but I, I'm pretty close to being done cleaning up my website, which has been challenging over the past year. Um, I did a whole website update, um, a re redesign, uh, I think last October, and that was a lot of fun, and I was glad to have it all done, but I'm still trying to clean up 
some of the stuff on the back end. The next goal is to create community and support the relationships we have as a family. Uh, I feel like we we had a great couple of months. We had a lot of birthdays, like I said, um, spending time with friends, things like that. And once it's summer, I want to make sure that we're going out and, you know, going downtown, participating in the community events. Our town does like waterfront concert series during the summer. So I want to do that, do like all of the fairs, uh, agricultural fairs, all of those types of things are really fun for us to do. Um, just uh, those types of things are, are the slow type enjoyable things that I'm talking about when I talk about slow living. We don't have to go and do like these huge vacations that cost a ton of money. There's so much stuff to do locally and seeking out that stuff is something that I want to do more of. Supporting uh, local artisans, uh, going to like art walks, um, listening to local musicians, all that kind of stuff really be more in the community, I think is a lot of fun. We don't have to leave our community to do fun things. I think a lot of times people think that you do, but I want to spend more time looking at what is available locally for us. And then my last goal is legacy. And as I've said, pretty much every, every goals video, I haven't done a ton with legacy, but this summer, my hope is to start working on the memory bins that are in the unfinished part of our basement and also attaching some legacy tasks into my morning routine. Things like writing letters to my kids, journaling to my kids, um, journaling in general, pictures, that kind of stuff. I was able... <laughs> to deal with a lot of the pictures. One of my goals was to spend five to 10 minutes a day working on uh, the pictures in my camera. No, the pictures in my phone uh, so that I got rid of what I didn't need and kept what I do need. Well, I ended up getting a new phone and Emma has my old phone now. So I had to go through and do that. And so I did it all in like a weekend um, because I, so that I could update my, to my new phone. And uh, so that was, that was taken care of, which is good. But the next part of that is to get photos printed. And I think I may have mentioned this before that I've lost a lot of photos over the years because of um, water being dumped on a computer, uh, losing an external hard drive, not losing it, like physically misplacing it, but uh, it, was broken. And then also I had transferred a lot of pictures onto an old iPod. Um, one of those old, like an old, old iPod. And I transferred them as photos at, onto an external hard drive, but I cannot seem to get them off of my iPod. And so they are just forever <laughs> memorialized on my iPod, which still works and charges and such, but it's on the little teeny tiny three inch screen. So <laughs> So maybe I'll call Apple and see if they can get those off. But I want to start going through the memory boxes and that is kind of partnering with that home management goal of getting my basement really organized and working well so I don't walk into it, feel overwhelmed and just turn around and leave. That things are organized and we're not keeping things that we don't need. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge because my kids, they like to keep all of the things. And so managing that's a little bit more challenging. Also, I need to go through all of our old homeschool stuff because I have a bin every year since we started homeschooling. We just finished our 12th year homeschooling. So I have a lot because I've just kept everything. I just feel like it, it was easier for me to just keep everything uh, back in the day so that I didn't have to make a split decision on whether or not I wanted to keep it. Um, but now that obviously Emma's going into her third year of high school, so we could probably go through some of the preschool, kindergarten, elementary stuff and weed out things that we don't need. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. I, again, I'm not done with my action plans. I haven't even started my action plans, but I do have a lot of ideas for uh, for this summer, for projects that I want to work on within the time that I have available to me. I don't want to be constantly working on things to make progress and forgetting 
what's right in front of me. So I do take a lot of the time that I have as free time and spend it with my kids. Um, I always want to be communicating with my kids and just have a great relationship with them. Same thing with my, my husband and the rest of my family. <laughs> But uh, relationships are really my most important thing. And so I focus a lot of time on those things and I let a lot of other things go in favor of taking that time for my kids, for my husband, for my, you know, my mom and my brother and sister-in-law and, and stuff like that. So managing that in the summer, we do a lot of family get-togethers and such. So making sure that I kind of balance all of those relationship type goals, as well as some of the things that I just need to get done. Uh, yeah, I still need to work on that a little bit, but I am going to get my action plans done and get my June goals all set up. And you will see that video shortly. I am sure that I will get it up soon since tomorrow is June 1st. So thank you guys so much for watching. This was just kind of a chatty video, going over some of my goals, my thinking about slow. I do feel like I've made a lot of progress this year. I've gotten rid of a ton of stuff, and um, I actually have a lot of stuff that I still need to get rid of. I just need to figure out if I'm going to try and sell it, if I'm going to donate it, or what I'm going to do with it. And that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. But I feel really good about how things have been going. I really have enjoyed using a Leuchtturm notebook because it gives me the space to make lists or journal or um, flesh out new ideas, write down action plans. Even though I am printing these off of Goal School, these little uh, action plans, which I didn't really go over, it just has so each one is for like a goal that, you know, your yearly goal. And then there's like a mini goal and some of the steps needed. So you just will take your overarching yearly goal and you take a smaller piece of that and the steps that you need to complete it and you write them down. And that just gives you a little bit of extra uh, accountability to make sure that you're moving in the right direction. And all of that writing that I do, in here and on those action plans, it solidifies it in my mind. So I'm not thinking about it as much. I just do the next thing on the list because I've written them down so many times. I know what I need to do and it's kind of like subliminal. I just, oh, I need to do this. Oh, I need to do that, um, which is helpful to me. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have questions about anything that I talked about or uh, if you want to see, how I'm doing my action plans, or you have questions about how to break down your own goals, let me know in the comments, or you can email me. My contact form is always in the description box. Um, we do talk about goals in my membership community. If you're interested, you can come over there and check it out. I try to share a lot of that stuff, my process and everything in my membership community. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.